Out in the open ocean, even the largest warships on Earth are no match for nature's wildest moods. Monster waves can rise like moving walls, slamming against steel hulls with unimaginable force. In those moments, every sailor on board feels the terrifying truth. Control lies not in human hands, but in the ocean's rage. Aircraft carriers, weighing over 100,000 tons, may seem indestructible. But when 60-foot waves pound them and winds roar past 70 milnabanach, stability becomes a battle for survival. These floating cities must withstand storms that have the power to sink smaller vessels instantly. The question is, how do these mighty giants survive the most difficult tests at sea? The answer lies not only in engineering, but also in the courage of the sailors who face chaos head-on when the horizon vanishes under towering waves. Sailors know that the sea can turn deadly without warning. A calm sky can transform into a raging storm in just hours, leaving even the best trained crews on edge. The risk isn't just to the ship, but also to the thousands of lives and billions of dollars worth of aircraft on board. Statistics show that waves over 50 feet occur more often than once believed. According to NOAA, rogue waves, sometimes more than twice the height of surrounding seas, can strike without warning, causing catastrophic damage. For a carrier, one wrong angle can mean disaster. This is why every storm is taken seriously. Unlike civilian ships that can turn back, the Navy often continues missions regardless of weather. When the ocean fights back, the crew must trust their training and the ship's design to hold the line. During massive storms, waves don't just toss a ship, they attack it from every direction. Carriers experience violent rolling, with decks tilting so far that aircraft must be chained down tightly to prevent destruction. On board, heavy machinery becomes a threat if not secured. A 2010 Navy report revealed that severe weather incidents have caused injuries, aircraft damage, and even fires triggered by equipment slamming out of place. Imagine hundreds of sailors trying to stabilize critical systems while the ship itself feels like it's climbing a mountain of water. Some veterans recall waves so high they smash directly into the flight deck, soaking jet fighters and sweeping unsecured gear into the sea. In those terrifying moments, the difference between survival and disaster is measured in how quickly the crew reacts. The Navy doesn't leave survival to chance. Carriers are built with massive V-shaped hulls designed to slice through towering waves instead of letting them roll the ship sideways. This design reduces the violent rocking that smaller ships often can't avoid. Ballast tanks are another lifesaver. By shifting thousands of gallons of seawater between compartments, crews can lower or raise the ship's center of gravity, helping stabilize it in the middle of chaos. It's like balancing a giant steel skyscraper while it's being shaken by nature. Advanced stabilizers, similar to airplane wings, also help counteract rolling. These systems extend beneath the water, adjusting angles automatically in real time. Without them, accurate jet takeoffs, missile launches, or even basic navigation in rough seas would be nearly impossible. Modern carriers use gyroscopic stabilizers spinning at over 10,000 RPM. The torque they generate pushes against the tilt of the ship, keeping it more level than physics alone would allow. It's a silent system working non-stop beneath the chaos above deck. At the same time, advanced weather radars and satellites monitor every patch of ocean. The Navy doesn't rely on luck. They track storms across thousands of miles, predicting when and where rogue waves may form. This allows ships to adjust course before danger escalates, but forecasts can't prevent every disaster. In 2015, the SS El Faro cargo ship was lost in Hurricane Joaquin despite modern tracking. For the Navy, such tragedies are reminders that the ocean doesn't forgive mistakes, and technology can only reduce, not erase, risk. Technology may be powerful, but the heart of survival lies in the crew. Every sailor undergoes relentless drills, from damage control to abandoned ship training. When chaos erupts, their split-second actions decide whether the carrier survives. Drills include flooding simulations, fire control, and man-overboard rescues in storm conditions. These aren't rehearsals for fun. They're based on real emergencies where lives were lost because hesitation lasted just a few seconds too. Long sailors describe working in storms as controlled, chaos. Alarms blare, steel groans, waves crash over decks, and yet orders must be followed with precision. In that environment, discipline and teamwork are as important as the ship's steel walls.
history shows just how brutal the ocean can be. During World War II's Typhoon Cobra in 1944, three U.S. destroyers capsized, killing nearly 800 sailors. Even carriers suffered severe damage, with aircraft hurled overboard like toys. Such events shaped today's safety protocols. The Navy studied past tragedies to design sturdier ships, improve storm forecasting, and ensure no vessel sails without redundancies. Every improvement is written in the memory of lives once lost. Still, no Navy officer forgets that history can repeat itself. Every storm brings back the haunting reminder that even the most advanced warships remain vulnerable when nature decides to strike at full force. For the public, carriers are symbols of unstoppable power. But for sailors, the hardest battles aren't fought against enemy fleets. They're fought against the unpredictable fury of the sea. Out there, survival is the ultimate mission. When a carrier sails back into port after months of storms and waves, it isn't just steel that proves its strength. It's the resilience of the men and women who refuse to break under pressure. Their courage is the true armor of these giants. So next time you see a Navy carrier cutting through the ocean, remember, the most difficult time isn't always war. Sometimes it's when the horizon disappears, the waves rise like mountains, and survival itself becomes the battle.